All right, this is the Math 270 midterm review. I'm following along with the practice midterm that was given in class. So you probably need to have that in front of you to follow along. Uh, number one was you were given a function h of x is equal to x plus 7 squared. And that can be expressed in the form of f of g of x, where f of x is x squared. Well, if you're trying to do a composition and the outside function is x squared, then the inside function, or g of x, must be the inside here, which is x plus 7. All right, number two says find the slope of the line that goes through the points negative 13, 13, and 1, 12. So m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's label these x1 at y1 and x2, y2. Let me fix this y1 so it looks like a real y1. That means we have 12 minus 13 over 1 minus a negative 13. That's equal to negative 1 over 14. Number three, if f of x is a linear function, f of negative two is equal to negative five, and f of five is equal to four. Find an equation for f of x. Well, this is really just giving you two points. This is the point negative two, negative five. This is the point five, four. So we're going to use the slope formula again. We can call this x1, y1, x2, y2. So that's 4 minus a negative 5 over 5 minus a negative 2. We're going to get 9 over 7. The equation of a line goes y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. <clears throat> so we have y minus, it doesn't matter which one we use, but I'll use the same y1 that we named up here, so it'd be negative 5, equals 9 sevenths times x minus a negative 2. <clears throat> we want to distribute this 9 sevenths, so we get 9 sevenths x, and that's going to be a plus because you're subtracting a negative, it'll be plus 18 sevenths. So y plus 5 equals 9 sevenths x plus 18 over 7. Subtract 5 on both sides. So y is equal to 9 over 7 x plus, <clears throat> actually it's negative. If you do 18 over 7 minus 5 in the calculator, you should come up with minus 17 over 7. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number 4. 1 over 4 x to the negative 7 is the same as x to the positive 7 over 4. The negative 7 means you can bring it up to the top and make it positive. The 4 doesn't have the exponent, so it stays down on the bottom. Uh, number 5. The 7th root of x to the 4th 
is written as x. Now the exponent is going to be on the top and the root is going to be on the bottom. So it's x to the 4 sevenths. Number 6, 6x six squared minus, or plus 1x minus 2 equals 0. This can be solved with your quadratic formula in the calculator where a equals 6, b equals 1, and c equals negative 2. You should get two answers when you do it. One is negative 2 thirds and the other one is 1 half. You'll notice that it says to write your answer as an integer or a fraction. So after you get your answers from the quadratic formula program, then you hit math enter enter to change it to a fraction. Number seven is to solve this inequality. First find your where it's zero. So x minus five equals zero and x minus three equals zero gives you two boundary points x equals 3 and x equals 5. So we know that it's 0 at 3 and 5. We want to know what's happening before, in between, and after those values. So pick a number before 3. 0 is a nice easy one. Between 3 and 5 is 4 and after 5 is 6. You can pick any values you want in those intervals. Now go back to the original function and plug it in. If I put 0 in, I get 0 minus 5, which is negative, and 0 minus 3, which is negative, but it's squared, so that's going to be positive. So we're looking at a negative times a positive is going to be negative. So this one's negative. In fact, this one that I'm highlighting in red right now is always going to be positive, so you only need to check the x minus 5. So you put 4 in. 4 is minus 5 is negative 1. That's a negative times a positive. Again, it's negative. Put 6 in. 6 minus 5 is positive. The other one's positive, so that one's going to be positive. The question is, when is this whole thing here? greater than zero or positive? Well, the answer is right here on this interval. And the way we express that would be x is greater than five. Because it's all the numbers greater than five are gonna make this expression positive. All right, number eight is a graph. And it looks something like this. It's got a hole and then a line. And the hole is at 2. And the question is um, to find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. And this value right here <coughs> is 2. So we come from the left, that means we're coming from this side. So coming from the left, as we approach 2, we look over, the value is 2. Next one is a limit as x approaches 2 from the right. Well, that means now you're coming up from this direction these yellow arrows. So here is 2. We look over, the value is still 2. So since the limit from the right and from the left are the same as we approach 2, the limit as we approach 2 of f of x is 2. If these were not the same, then the limit wouldn't exist. And then it says find f of 2. Well, the actual value of f of 2 um, would be negative 3 
because they have a solid dot right here at negative 3. So the limit and the function value um, both exist, but they're not the same. So that just means that the function is discontinuous. Number 9, you're asked to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative 1 of negative 9x minus 9 over x squared plus 6x plus 5. What you always want to do with these is, when, because it's a, a rational function, you want to factor it if you can. So we can take a negative 9 out in the numerator and then the bottom factors to x plus 5 and x plus 1. And then we're able to cross out the x plus 1's. So we're just looking at the limit as x approaches negative 1 of negative 9 over x plus 5. So it's much easier now to go ahead and plug in negative 1. So it would be negative 1 plus 5 on the bottom. We get negative 9 over 4. So negative 9 fourths. <clears throat> Alright, number 10. You have a graph that looks something like this. There's a hole here at 2, and it says, determine which one of the following rules for continuity is violated at x equals 2. So we know it's not continuous because there's a hole here. As you're going along, you have to actually pick your pencil up, skip that point, and then move on. So we know that it's not continuous. The question is, which one of the three rules the limit as x approaches, it says a, but the a that we're using is 2. Limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. Does that exist? Well, yes, it does. So that one's fine. The limit as x approaches a of f of x equal to f of a. Well, to answer that, you have to answer what is f of a? There's a hole there. That means that f of a doesn't exist. It's undefined. So it definitely violates the last rule that f of a is defined because it's not. It therefore also violates the middle rule because f of a doesn't exist so there's no way that these can be equal. However, the answer you're going to select in Myoka Math is this one. Both of these, both of these are correct, but the one that you want to make sure you put in is the third one. All right, number eleven is mostly done in the calculator. Or it's all done in the calculator. Um, so if anybody wants that, there's a video already in My Open Math that shows you how to do this one in your calculator. Number 12 says use the limit definition of the derivative to find the slope of the tangent line to the curve. Okay. So the limit definition, we're going to need a new page for this, says that f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So that's what they mean by use the limit definition. So I always say start with f of x plus h. So that's going to be 4 times x plus h squared plus 6 times x plus h plus 3. Well that's 4 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 6x plus 6h plus 3. 
distribute that 4 and we're going to get 4x squared plus 8xh plus 4h squared plus 6x plus 6h plus 3. All right, so that's our f of x plus h. So now we can look at the limit <clears throat> as h approaches 0 of all of this that we just found minus the original function. So I'm just recopying. And then we're going to subtract, which means we change the sign on everybody, so it'll be minus 4x squared, minus 6x, and minus 3, all over h. There's always going to be some canceling. 4x squared, negative 4x squared. 6x, negative 6x, 3, and 3. So what we have now is the limit as h approaches 0 of x h, x, 8xh plus 4h squared plus 6h all over h. Divide out an h with everybody and that is the limit as h approaches 0 of 8x plus 4h plus 6. Well, if you put 0 in that for h, what you're left with is 8x plus 6. So here's a derivative. From there, they want you to find the slope of the tangent line. Well, the derivative gives you the slope of the tangent line, and in Specifically in this one, they want the slope of the tangent line at 3. So plug 3 in, you get 8 times 3 plus 6, that's equal to 30. So 30 is the actual answer. 8x plus 6 is the derivative, but you have to take it one more step. 13 gives you f of x is equal to negative 2x squared minus 2x plus 1. They want you to find f of x plus h. Well, that's negative 2 times x plus h squared minus 2 times x plus h plus 1. All I've done is substitute x with x plus h. That's equal to negative 2 parentheses x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, and parentheses. Distribute the negative 2, so you get minus 2x minus 2h plus 1. So that's f of x plus h. Um, oh, no, we need to distribute one more time. Negative 2x squared minus 4xh minus 2h squared minus 2x minus 2h and plus 1. This is the answer to part a. Then they want you to find the difference quotient. So that is to subtract the original function. So let me write down f of x plus h. Then we subtract negative 2x squared, so that would be plus 2x squared, plus 2x, and minus 1 all over h. Now remember you can cancel some things. Negative 2x squared and 2x squared. Minus 2x and positive 2x plus 1 and minus 1. Then if you divide everybody by h you get minus 4x minus 2h minus 2. So that's going to be your answer to part b. Part C just asks you to find the limit of that as x approaches or as h approaches zero. 
So that is the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 4x minus 2h minus 2. If you put 0 in for h, what you get is negative 4x minus 2. Number 14 is a series of derivatives. So if f of x is equal to x to the 10th power, then f prime of x is, take this 10 down in front and subtract 1. So 10x to the 9. If g of x is equal to negative 3x to the 5th power, then the derivative, or g prime of x, is equal to negative 15 x to the fourth power. If h of x is equal to 1 over x to the fifth power, we rewrite that as x to the negative 5. Then h prime of x is equal to negative 5 x to the negative 6 power. Number 15, we want the derivative at 1 of this function. So find the derivative. Derivative of 2 is 0, 3x is 3, and then we get minus 10x. Now we want to plug in negative 1, so that's 3 minus 10 times negative 1, that's 3 plus 10, would give you 13. Number 16, find the derivative of the 10th root of x. Make it derivative friendly by making it x to the 1 10th power. The derivative of that, so d dx of x to the 10th, 1 10th power, that's just a fancy way of saying the derivative of, is 1 10th x to the negative, well, it's going to be 1 10th minus 1, which would give you negative 9 tenths. Seventeen is find the derivative of four ln of x. Well, ln of x, its rule is just to do one over whatever is in the inside here, so that's just going to be four over x. Eighteen, we have that f of x is equal to 2x plus 8 minus 11e to the x. Then the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f of x at the point 0, negative 3 is given by y equals mx plus b, and we're asked to find the slope in the y-intercept. So start by finding f prime. That's going to be 2, and then just minus 11e to the x. We want the slope, the equation of the tangent line at the point 0, negative 3, so that means we need to plug in 0 for x. That's going to be just 2 minus 11, which is negative 9. And then we use y minus y1 equals negative 9 times x minus x1. They give us a point 0, negative 3, so it's y minus a negative 3 equals negative 9 times x minus 0. That is y plus 3 equals negative 9x. And then subtract the 3, so y equals negative 9x minus 3. So m is negative 9 and b is negative 3. Number 19 is a word problem with the demand function d of q, um, which also turns out to be your price. 
is negative q squared minus 2q plus 569, where q is thousands of units sold, and d of q is dollars per unit. Compute the following showing all calculations clearly. A. If 14,000 units are to be sold, what price should be charged for each item? So Q is in thousands of units, so we just need to do D of 14 here because Q is in the thousands of units, so 14 would indicate 14,000. So that's going to be negative 14 squared minus 2 times 14 plus 569 and that should come out to be 345. That's going to be the price that you should charge for each item. I'm just going to verify that. Minus 2 times 14 plus 569. Yes, okay. B. Um, if a price of 281 is set for this item, how many units can you expect to sell? This time they're giving you D of Q, which is 281, and they want you to find Q. Well, set it equal to zero by subtracting 281 on both sides. So you have 0 equals q squared minus 2q, and that's 569 minus 281 is 288. Then use your quadratic formula program to get the answers on that. So the answer is to 19b. But you're gonna, you might get two, but only one's going to make sense. You should get an answer of 16, but remember this is in thousands of units, so make it 16,000. And then C, at what value of Q does D of Q cross the Q axis? Well, when you cross the Q axis, it's like crossing the Y axis. You need to take negative Q squared minus 2Q plus 569, set it equal to zero, solve it for Q, and you should get 22.875. All right, number 20. Suppose the product's revenue function is given by R of Q equals negative Q squared plus 900Q, where R of Q is in dollars and Q is in units sold. So R of Q is equal to negative 5Q squared plus 900Q. Find the numeric value for the marginal revenue at 68 units and record your result in the box below. Well, marginal is going to be taking the derivative. So it would be negative 10q plus 900. And then if they want to know what the marginal is at 68, you just plug 68 in. And that should come up with $220 per unit. Number 21, we're given a function and we want to find its derivative. Now you could use the quotient rule, but you can also make your life a little easier make and divide everybody by x to the fourth. So that would give you 4x plus 3 and then x cubed divided by x to the fourth be 3 minus 1 will give you a negative 1, but you can just bring that up to the top and make it 2x to the negative 1. It's 
That's how we make it derivative friendly. Now take the derivative. You're just going to get 4 and minus 2x to the negative 2. And if you want to write that without any negative exponents, it would be minus 2 over x squared. Twenty two, you have to use the quotient rule. There's no way to make it derivative friendly. So we want the derivative of the top, which is minus two x times the bottom, then subtract the derivative of the bottom, which is two x times the top. And that's all over the bottom squared. And that's it. You don't have to simplify. That's a perfectly legit answer. 23 is g of x equals e to the x over 1 plus 3x. Again, you need the quotient rule. Derivative of the top is, well, derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Then multiply by the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom, which is 3, times the top, all over the bottom squared. You could simplify that, but it's not necessary for me. That's a perfectly fine answer. 24 is f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 2 all to the 2. For this, you want to find the derivative by using the chain rule. This 2 comes down in front, making it 2 times what's inside. The 2 exponent drops down to 1, and then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x plus 2. So this is the chain rule. 25 is giving you a position function f of t equals 3t cubed plus 4t plus 9. Your velocity is the derivative, so that's going to be 9t squared plus 4. They want you to find the velocity at time t equals 3, so plug 3 in. With some careful computation, you should get 85. The acceleration is equal to the second derivative, so that's going to be 18t. And the acceleration at 3 seconds is 18 times 3, which is 54. 26, you're given a graph, looks something like this, and you're asked to find um, where it's decreasing. So it's going to be decreasing everywhere, I'll draw it in green, it's decreasing from here all the way to here. So if you look carefully at your graph, that would be from um, negative 3 to negative 0.5. Oh, I drew my graph a little off there, didn't I? So it dips down before we get, hey, <laughs> before that and then goes back up. All right, so I'll do the decreasing in red. All right, decreasing from negative three to 0.5. So you just put a negative three, and then they have this here, and then negative 0.5. Now that wants, you, wants to know where the inflection point is, 
we can see that it's um, concave up. Let me see if I can get uh, something fancy here. No, not really, but I need the rainbow color. Okay, so concave down from here to here. We can see that's concave down. And then I'll do in blue, it's concave up. Come on. Concave up in, in the blue part here. It's changing concavity right around this green dot. So that is at about negative 1.75. It's where it goes from concave down to concave up. 